you did a bourbon with Barnes about it. You talked about it, the aftermath, the fallout, or um, I guess th- how the debate has now reverberated over time or matured over the last week. They're eating the cats. They're eating the dog. Eat, eat the cats. Uh, it's turned into a meme. It's insane what it has done by way of shedding light, not only on Springfield, Ohio, but all of America, where people did not know that this was going on in small towns. I, look, ultimately, I believe we are going to get confirmation that it, it has happened, because even if there's only one person in a group of 20,000 people that will do something stupid, it, it, there's no question something similar has happened, something like it has happened. And we've now gotten confirmation that it happened elsewhere, uh, at least video proof. It was Chris Rufo who confirmed this, geo-tracked, everything verified. A cat was on a spit being barbecued, and the video was on the internet. Except it wasn't Springfield, Ohio. It was somewhere else, like a half an hour away. Uh, We have, uh, as far as I'm concerned, basically heard reports, confirmed reports, whether or not they press charges afterwards is a different issue, of a guy saying, I just saw of four Haitians taking geese out of the pond. I mean, it's an audio recording with the cops, gives the street, I verified the street, and you'll notice whenever the authorities come out and say, we have no confirmed reports of people illegally taking fowl out of the park. So I don't know what that means illegally, because it doesn't contradict the story. It's just, there might, it might not have been illegal, whatever they took. They took a, a, a duck or a canard and not a, a, not a goose. Uh, we're seeing what is actually going on. We have not yet gotten the hard confirmation about the cats and the dogs in Springfield, Ohio, whatever. But this is aged in a way that I think is absolutely beneficial. It's highlighted uh, with, with an, an amazing amount of power Kamala Harris's policy, Biden's policy of giving temporary protected status to 150,000 Haitian migrants, immigrants, whatever you want to call it. And um, what what is your impression of the aftermath of this debate, which we covered in real time? Yeah, so I think, I mean, I'm, I'm, we're going to cover some of the uh, political angles of it uh, tomorrow with uh, People's Pundit Richard Barris. What are the odds? People's Pundit Daily at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time also breaking down some polling issues and other issues and election prediction issues and things of that nature. But we, when uh, we did that show last Monday said that the way for Trump to dominate the, what becomes viral from the debate is to bring this precise topic up to talk about uh, the stories of Haitian migrants and other uh, migrant communities coming in and doing disturbing things like, uh, disappearing and missing cats, uh, dogs, other animals, and whether or not they're killing them and or eating them. Uh, because we believe that it would dominate the viral section of a debate, and that's an important part of any debate. And pre- pre- that's precisely what took place. Uh, this topic utterly dominated every post-debate discussion, and the media's intended narrative of Trump falls apart, Harris surges from the debate, it went to the back burner. They already had the fake polls ready to roll out, but nobody's paying attention to those because all they're talking about, all they're memeing about, all they're even singing about is who's eating the cats and who's eating the dogs. And so the uh, brilliant uh, politically uh, on Trump's behest and behalf, the some of the legal issues implicated are that, you know, what's happening is the some people would say it's illegal. Uh, and it, it depends on exactly how all of this has worked, but it's definitely legally questionable that what has the Biden administration has used their claim of their authority for resettlement of asylum refugees to massively import a replacement voting and labor pool. What they've done, uh, they're coming in. I mean, Frank Luntz was even bragging about this, like it's a wonderful thing. So they're, they're ba- you know, in working class middle America, who's already been eviscerated in the industrialized sections of this country, partic- that's the reason why we call the industrial Midwest the rust belt, uh, is because of how much has been lost. And they've been, and this has been true for a long time. I had friend, and friends of mine, investigative journalists who had been documenting this in Tennessee. They'd been documenting all across the country that the so-called non-government organizations and charities are in cahoots with big corporations to import a docile, supplicant, lower-wage labor pool 
to replace uh, local working class communities. And, uh, and then they enrich all the politicians along the way. So usually the mayors, the county commissioners, the district attorneys, the sheriffs, the cops uh, are all in one way, shape or form paid off to turn a blind eye to this and to try to keep a lid on public disclosure. So you have this small town of Springfield, Ohio, that's been going to county commissions and complaining about all, everything that's happening, about surging rents, about out of about people driving on the roads that don't appear to know what they're doing, about insurance rates spiraling out of control. And one of the things they complained about, though it was not the only one by any stretch, nor the main one, was uh, cats going missing, animals going missing, ducks and goose going missing from parks. And it should come as no surprise if you know anything about the and, you know, this sort of animation tradition uh, within the religious, I'm probably mispronouncing it, mispronouncing that, but the religious tradition, spiritual tradition goes back to ancient civilizations, but very strong in Africa to this day. And the, and the Haitians tend to be more representative of those traditions than other uh, African ancestral groups were. Uh, voodoo originated and stayed strong in Haiti. It's borrowing from old African spiritual traditions. And the idea was that you could take on the spirit of another animal. And this comes in all kinds of forms, that there's beliefs that you can actually physically transform into those animals, uh, that ancestors may have done so, and things like this. And But part of the way you can take on the spirit of these other animals is by uh, eating the animal. And uh, no less an authority on this than former President Barack Obama, who talked about it, who talked about when he was in Asia and other, in Africa and other places, one of the things he did was eat things like dog, and that uh, the the part of the belief structure is this taking on the spirit of what you do, because he talks about maybe we'll get to eat tiger and then I'll become a tiger. Uh, so this should not be a shock to anybody that this is going on at some level. There have been stories like this of various kinds all over the country. The media just wants to suppress them because they like importing uh, the cheap labor and future voters to replace uh, the working class Americans they hold in complete contempt. And when Trump raised this, they would go ballistic. They would be snideful and contemptuous, as they typically are. They would ignore the empirical evidence of it. They would enlist their corrupted allies. Uh, like the mayor of Springfield, like many of the county commissioners in Springfield. Uh, but they would mostly take the bait because as long as this topic is being discussed, it's a topic that favors Trump politically because of what J.D. Vance has uh, very well articulated. The, uh, uh, you know, I mean, our former interview of J.D. Vance somehow showed up in the in the news this week. Twice. I, I, another one went back to that interview and called me a far right podcaster. <laughs> I was, I was going to make a joke. Uh, we, we've been right, all right, but far right. We've been extremely right. Yeah, uh, exactly, I, exactly. Get it right. Not, not, not. Uh, the just right is right. The uh, but so uh, that that's the underlying political dynamics of what's taking place, and they're trying to cover it up. And there was some debate. Well, they're not really illegal. Yeah. Well, the question is whether this authority used by the Biden administration is in fact being properly done legally. The issue is that nobody can sue. Everybody just gets to complain. And because everybody's corrupt and complicit in the political infrastructure and, and the press is uh, on board with this strategy, and part of that is to gaslight the world into believing there are no problems. And even worse, the reaction of the FBI and the Biden Justice Department was to threaten people that if they talk about it, if they discuss it, if they disclose it, they might be subject to pro federal criminal prosecution for hate crimes, started posting boards up uh, relating to this. Because, I mean, basically everybody's complete. The, the, what's happening is the corporations get a real cheap, docile labor supply that takes lower wages because the, the government is subsidizing them out of taxpayer dollars. Also, be, and they can't complain because they fear if they complain about their employment conditions, they get shipped off back to, to Haiti or wherever else it is they came from. And the local politicians are all in cahoots and lining their pockets with it. And so they have no end. It's almost like the the uh, the story that Scorsese made into a film about how they tried to, to you know, scam, scam the 
Native American tribe that hid oil in eastern Oklahoma. It's that level of corruption and collusion and criminality by pretty much almost everybody. I mean, the governor got caught, and so he had to suddenly do something. But the reality is he knew about this and had kept his mouth shut about it because his political allies are getting enriched by it. So, I mean, that's the mm -hmm. levels and layers of it. As Senator Vance, a vice presidential candidate Vance, uh, explained throughout, he goes, th th there needed to be a highlight on this issue. Um, because, I mean, Elon Musk retweeted uh, uh, Vance's, uh, you know, going it through how he changed his mind on Trump from 2016. And a big part of it was the arrogant contempt these elites have for ordinary people. And then you have so-called journalists like Michael Tracy, who wants to lecture everybody about this, but can't get off his lazy rear end and just go to Springfield. He's supposed to be a journalist. So if, if, if you're going to be snideful about it, uh, Michael, go investigate. It's what you tell other people to do. So the go down to Springfield, because Christopher Rufo did, and he used proper investigative forensic mechanisms and methods of the kind you would use to substantiate it as evidence in court that detailed this is happening. And if you knew anything about Haitian culture and tradition, it would not shock you at all. I mean, it's just, I mean, this is a religion that still cuts off the chickens' heads and pours blood on their heads and does a bunch of stuff. It's part of the traditions. Not to mention you're talking about a society that has been brutalized by violence for centuries. So you combine all the things going on, be no shock at all that this is taking and pretending, oh, this is this is some form of bigotry to expose their corruption, to expose their illegality, to expose their stealing American wages and jobs to those burdening working class communities across this country. No, they are the criminals. They are the ones engaging in illicit behavior. They are the bigots. They are the prejudiced ones. And uh, ultimately, they're going to lose on this politically. 